Bastion is one of those games that sticks with you after you've played it. If you have played it, you'll most likely know exactly what I mean. If you've not, don't worry, this video is going to be as spoiler free as I can possibly make it. All I want to do here is illustrate the main reason behind why Bastion is such a memorable experience, why Bastion stands out. And this comes down to something which I've called narrative proactivity. I think there's very little argument that one of Bastion's strongest suits is its story, and the way it's conveyed to you, the player. To delineate this a bit more though, I'm going to split this video up into three parts to try and explain more about what makes this all so special. We're going to be looking at what narrative proactivity is in the context of the game, we'll look into the way in which this concept manifests as you play, and finally I want to have a look at what effect this has on the player, and in turn, why it makes a lasting impression. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Okay, so narrative proactivity. Firstly, I want to define proactivity in reference to something else, reactivity. Reactivity as a concept is one of the most basic underlying components of game design. If we define reactivity vaguely as something like a game presenting a challenge or goal, or any other sort of gameplay component, which in turn respond to the inputs of the player, then you can see that it's entirely ubiquitous within the medium. In her book, Introduction to the Study of Video Game Music, Alyssa Ask explains the concept quite well through a musical perspective. The term reactive refers to music that changes in response to a singular, non-musical action of the player. An example of such music would be when Mario goes down a pipe and the music changes from overworld to underworld music. Another example would be in early Final Fantasy games, when the music cuts from dungeon music to battle music when a random encounter begins. Both of these situations involve the character executing an action and the music reacting to the player's action, with a singular musical response. This is pretty interesting, right? It's a good way of explaining this link between real-world action and in-game consequence. Proactivity, though, is different. This is anything that the player does autonomously of reactive design. If you combine reactive and proactive gameplay, you get something a bit different, and this is where Bastion comes in. Bastion is novel in the sense that it reacts to most about every action you take, but it tailors its reaction to what you do specifically. It brings your personal agency, your proactivity, into the forefront. It's interesting because Bastion is a linear game. At points you can pick the order you do some levels in, but at its core, it is linear. Linear isn't a bad word, by the way, some people assume linearity is bad game design, but this isn't true, that's a topic for another video though. The point is that gamers with structural linearity often tend to have narrative linearity as well. God of War is a good example of this, the Uncharted games too. It tends to work on the premise of making your way through a directed area, and then getting some plot, and you kind of just rinse and repeat that until the game ends. There's one route to take, and the story happens along that route. Bastion treads this line more gingerly than the games around it. It follows a similar structure, in the sense that levels and plot progression intermingle, but it differs in two main ways. Firstly, Bastion's story is told as you play, not in between gameplay. And secondly, narrative details come into being as a result of your autonomy. So let's break down how Bastion's story is told a bit more. Bastion is an example of something called intradiegetic narration. This just means that this story is told by a narrator who is himself directly implicated in the story's progression. Intradiegetic narration is actually quite normal in games, and Final Fantasy X's Titus at points is an intradiegetic narrator, GLaDOS from Portal is as well actually. What makes Bastion stand out from the crowd though is something I just mentioned previously, proactivity. Final Fantasy X is a linear game, like Bastion, but its story is very much a product of expected and reactive gameplay. It is brilliant though. Through combining Bastion's intradiegesis with its player-based narrative proactivity, it makes for a very interesting experience. Let me explain how it works. As you progress through a level in Bastion, the narrator, called Rox, provides exposition for you on the areas you explore, the enemies you encounter, the items you find, and on life before the events of the game. This is pretty standard stuff. It's cool, and the narrator's voice is actual liquid gold, but what makes Bastion stand out is the sheer depth of narrative possibilities. Rux will actively comment on what you do as you do it. This blows me away every time. Whether you just smash stuff for a while, fall off a ledge, take damage from a certain enemy, destroy certain parts of the environment, there's dialogue for almost every action you can take. The narration in this game is special because it tailors itself to you and how you choose to play. If you play the game twice, you'll have two separate narrative experiences. Because the narrative responds to proactivity, the experience is specific to you. Just as the ground only appears in Bastion as you move towards it, the narrative only appears as you move towards that too. So why is this important? What does this do to help improve the game experience? I think it does two things, both quite simple. The first thing is that it helps to boost that feeling of agency you get from playing a game. Games are special because of their interactivity. You'll find no other medium which allows and supports the placement of such direct autonomy on a story. What Bastion does is it adds an extra layer of depth to the predictability of linear gameplay. 
Knowing as a player that your actions matter is really important for feeling a connection to a game, and if the individual choices you make and the measures you take have an actual tangible impact on the way the game plays out, it sticks with you. The second thing is that this actually builds up the player's understanding and enjoyment of the story. Very much like in Dark Souls, Bastion wants you to piece together the story from your own experiences as much as it wants to convey it to you otherwise. Because the story develops in conjunction with gameplay and your actions, every moment is filled with character, novelty, personality. Killing a boss enemy will often lead to a sombre reflection on its recently ended existence. Your individual preference for weapon loadouts will get a nod from the narrator. Every success, every failure, every attempt, every experience. The nuance of this narrative doesn't get pushed behind the very good gameplay, and it doesn't overpower it either. The two work to create something called ludonarrative harmony, which leads to a strong sense of immersion, as well as a stronger emotional investment in the game itself. To sum this all up, I think the key thing to keep in mind is that Bastion is not an entirely proactive gameplay experience. I'm not sure that can exist. It might sound a bit abstract, but games at their core are reactive, it's inherent in their design, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. An entirely proactive game wouldn't be a game anymore, because there'd be no gameplay parameters, no preset goals to aim for, and this is the bread and butter of what makes a game a game. I think it's important that Bastion utilises these proactive elements because it helps to personalise the game experience, to make it more memorable for you as a player, and it makes it stand out from the crowd. Too often in games, you can feel as if you're just following the patterns and going through the motions, but Bastion isn't quite like that. It has an impact on you, because it lets you have an impact on it in turn. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't played Bastion, um, go play it. If you have played it, go play it again. It'll take you less than 10 hours, 5 if you're absolutely rapid, and it's an experience definitely worth having. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it, and subscribe if you'd like to see me spout more nonsense in the future. Cheers again, and see you in the next one.